Hey everyone, Dr. Dobson, and we're going to be surgically extracting a 1.6 in this video. Um, here's an overview. We're going to go over anesthesia, incisions, flapping, sectioning, and uh, elevation of the roots individually. So here's the case. Patient had a previously treated 1.6 and it had fractured off at the crown. So unrestorable at this point uh, so the only thing we can do is extract the tooth and we actually plan for a bridge in this case due to the size of the restorations on the 1.7 and the 1.5 so we'll get coverage for those teeth and replace the missing 1.6 um, all in one go as opposed to doing an implant uh, in the 1.6 site so we'll get into the footage here uh, oh bear with me with the Wacom so we'll anesthetize the buckle with uh, 1 in 200 articane. You'll see a lot of bleeding from the uh, needle puncture and then the palatal. Patient's on anticoagulant therapy and you'll see a lot of bleeding from the incision as well. It's not worth stopping anticoagulant therapy um, because you risk having a clot block up the brain or the heart and you have to lose a lot of blood for it to be significant systemically. So even a surgical tooth extraction like this is uh, it's not uh, necessary to cease anticoagulant therapy. So we'll continue with a standard flap on the mesial and distal. You do have to be careful with hemostasis for situations like this. So you have a follow-up call and then we'll do a sulcular incision and we'll nick a little bit of the gum tissue there inadvertently. And then once we've separated the cellular tissue, we'll take a periosteal and peel it back so we can see the buckle bone. And this is a situation where you have to remove bone and section the roots because there's not enough tooth to just grab with a force up and hope for the best. So we'll section the roots apart all the way down to the bone through the frication. And once we've separated the buccal roots from each other, we'll separate the buccal roots from the palatal root by making a little peace sign. For the distal and then for the mesial. And then once we've done this, uh, we'll be smooth sailing, um, removing the roots individually. So we'll just grab a 77R and wiggle the roots out individually. Grab the distal and then the mesial, and the mesial actually gets a little bit hung up because it turned out to have a bit of, bit of a wicked curve on it. So we'll actually have to grab some just some how pliers that were handy and pull it out. You can see the curve on it there that was preventing it from coming out. You can also see a little bit of GP poking out the root tip there, which is kind of cool. And then um, we'll move the palatal root, which is obviously the biggest root and the most well anchored. Try not to touch the five and the seven because of the large restorations. So we'll just see if we can't get some luxation on it with a periosteal. Probably could have grabbed a root tip forcep for this one that would have worked just as well, but we'll grab a elevator and and just lift it up and then we're finished with the extraction so we'll clean up the site you can see that bit of interproximal bone is going to be a problem for the tongue because we're not grafting we're not going to be placing a membrane so we're actually gonna grab a bone file and just rasp that down flat Grab the curette and poke around the apices. It's root treated uh, with no lesions, so there isn't really going to be any granulation tissue at the apex of any of the roots. So we'll just grab the bone file and uh, just work it down flat until it's smooth to our thumb. Fast forward through that. And then we'll irrigate with sterile saline and then put in some gel foam into each of the root sockets. So one into the palatal and then 
one shared between the buckles. And then we'll close up the flap. If I could go back, I'd probably suture this one, but for some reason decided to try to use a tissue adhesive. Tissue adhesive likes to have a dry site in order to work well. And we can place our thumb on the um, gum tissue to try to get it to stop bleeding fully, but doesn't really work that well. So the uh, adhesive was a little bit messy. Yeah, not a great site to try to use tissue adhesive in retrospect, but healed up just fine anyway. We'll take a PA to verify that everything's out, and that's going to be it.